Welcome back, everyone, to the Jeff Assembly. We're here at Jeff Live, streaming from the Connect for Climate Facebook page. And I'm here with Babette, a researcher and senior research fellow at the Stockholm Environment Institute, looking at the intersection of gender and climate change. And I wanted to start off, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, my pleasure. I get this question a lot as I, I work in forestry, but like, what, what is the connection? Why gender? So could you share a little bit more from your perspective, what's the case for including gender in this conversation? Right, for instance, you mentioned forests, or shall we say even agriculture. I mean, one can take a stance looking at them um, from very gender blind eyes or a lens and see that they're just all natural resources. However, at the end of the day, people are involved in the use and let's say the management of natural resources. And who are these people? It's largely women, men, and even children, and perhaps even the elderly. So if, for instance, those who work or manage or use these resources um, do not have enough skills, knowledge, or even other resources to sort of ensure that um, farm products are actually well produced, then they are, in a sense, disadvantaged. So in this case, for instance, if women don't have land, enough land, or they're not able to exercise their rights to land, then how will they realize their farm livelihoods? Or if they don't have access to water, for instance, what about irrigation? How would they irrigate their crops? With respect to climate change, it may be possible that they're affected in different ways. For instance, if you have extreme events, like floods or shall we say slow onset events like droughts whose livelihoods are affected whose resources are affected who disproportionately would have to ensure that productivity is sustained and ensured so it's always a question of people and resources yes so as we know climate change marginalized communities are hit the hardest and, and essentially women are a core subset of that community. Yeah. Yes. So uh, we know the projections for climate change are not that great. And so uh, what is that interface between gender and climate as you've researched it? What are, what are some of the, the projections you have moving forward? Um, I think largely, um, for instance, when it comes to um, floods, there have been studies already done in, shall we say, the last 10 years showing that it's largely poorer women who are more affected by floods as, uh, as a result of climate change. Um, what happens is, I think, for instance, in um, the tsunamis or... Well, you know what? Yeah, well, we're a hopeful group here at the Jeff Assembly. So yeah. let's shift the conversation and talk about solutions. What are some of the, the things that you see are promising moving forward? I think, of course, women organizing themselves, women being aware of the problems themselves, and women being able to do something for, uh, to address such problems, to actually explore possible solutions that um, are realistic and that could be life-changing as well, as we say, transformative. Um, women organizing themselves is really key, but at the same time, also reaching out to other groups such as men and other social groups um, is vital because um, it's not as if we should leave sort of the environmental mess just to women and push the envelope towards them but rather actually also engage with other sectors, other groups, including men, including the wealth, uh, wealthier groups, including uh, the private sector and other, other institutions, the government, shall we say, um, to ensure that, well, the environmental mess um, is not just women's sole responsibility. Yes, and we're seeing this come up as a theme over and over again today about part building partnerships, but in, in this case, it would be women organizing themselves and women leading that conversation. Well, I want to talk about young women 
and something I'm passionate about. I work a lot with young people. Um, what is your, your vision for the future for, for young women in sustainable development? What is some of your advice to them? I think they're so savvy. Mm -hmm. They, for instance, um, they're, very much, um, uh, they're very much aware of the uses and, uh, the uses as well of, so, shall we say, social media, you know, and the potentials that um, social media has, for instance, in reaching out to other, to other young people and to, not, to the not so young people regarding the importance of gender equality. Um, I think young people are also much more aware now of, let's say, um, the implications of big projects on the environment, um, big infrastructural projects, or shall we say even big development projects, and what implications that might have on communities. So I think um, young people could very much step in into this space and um, share the message, raise awareness, themselves become agents of change. Yes. And for the young men out there? I think it's a great opportunity because gender is not just about, when we talk about gender, we talk about gender equality. But of course, the premise there, or the assumption there is that perhaps women are less equal than men. But if young men are aware, you know, then we have a critical mass that's actually going to ensure that gender equality is something that's mainstream that gender equality is something that's part of everybody's consciousness to a point that I'd like to look forward to one day, gender equality will no longer be an issue. Yeah, and I'm seeing some promising changes there, so we definitely have hope there for the future. Thank you so much for having, um, for talking to us today. Uh, you guys heard it, you can be there for gender equality, climate change, environmental and sustainable development all at once. So thank you for joining us here at Jeff. Um, keep following the conversation on Jeff Live and on the Connect for Climate Facebook page. See you soon.